Dr. Walpath, you are the, one of the world's uh, most experienced uh, surgeons using and employing transit time flow in your practice. I believe now you're retired from surgery, right? Correct, but, yes. So, but you used it, you were an early adopter. When did you, when did you start using uh, transit time flow measurements? And relative to your career, how long had you practiced without it? Yeah, well, I practiced half of my uh, span as a cardiac surgeon without, and the second half with. Okay. <laughs> and that was about 20 years ago we started, really at the very, very beginning of uh, the company. So the very earliest yeah, of four meters yeah, Absolutely. Used. I think we did the, the, the first uh, cardiac cases in Europe. Okay. Uh, with transit time and with medicine, probably even the first in the world with medicine, there was uh, one report out uh, from a competitor who tried the same thing in the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I think we did the uh, first in man with. Uh, okay, with, so there you uh, go. There's there, uh, there's the history. So now <laughs> exactly. that we've dated you, uh, when you first started using it, we didn't really have that much confidence. In the, clin in the endpoints to tell you that a graft was functional or not. How did you use it and how did your knowledge uh, and understanding of the data change uh, to the point where you really relied upon it as a, as a Well, this is a whole process basically and the first thing we did uh, when I discussed that with um, Anne Grip and uh, Jon Hoem at that time was I said, well, this is great, it's absolutely great, but first I want to know if it works. And if we, we did a validation study first mm -hmm. to see if it really does measure what we want to measure and how, it, uh, how is the accuracy and the precision of the method, but it was excellent. And uh, uh, simultaneously we introduced it uh, also in the clinic and of course the surgeons uh, were a bit reluctant at the beginning because every surgeon said, well, well, uh, um, we do a good job, we know when uh, we do a bad job, we don't need this. Uh, that, this is a typical reaction and it's only with time uh, showing them that they can get some advantage of knowing, uh, having a real uh, objective measure uh, to what they have done that it, it could have a, a really an importance on the work at the time of surgery but also maybe in the future. What does a surgeon need to see to go from being skeptical to being an advocate to the point where they won't do cabbage surgery without it? Well, I think the, uh, what happens to every surgeon and in one point or another in his career is that he has a failed graft. And a failed graft, if he has now this measurement uh, which clearly shows him that there is no flow and he redoes it and he sees that there was a flap or a problem and, uh, and uh, he can correct it and just a few uh, minutes after the correction he has a perfect flow. This is, I think, the... <laughs> that's, that's the epiphany. <laughs> yeah, the, it is. The, the yeah. lights turn it's on absolutely, at that point. It's absolutely, yeah, yeah. that is really uh, uh, most of them. And then, of course, now in all these years, there have been so many studies on quality control, on assessment of flow, on the, the uh, assessment of intraoperative compared to postoperative, and then also in the long range uh, patency of these grafts. And this is now the science behind it, showing yeah. that uh, uh, there is a really a, a value to do it. From a clinical validation standpoint, do you think that there is now enough research and enough data out there to say this is a device that should be a standard of care? Well, I really think, the, I mean, with the last uh, bit of research done by Teresa, uh, with uh, the introduction in the guidelines, I think we, we, we are quite, um, quite confident and I think everybody should be quite confident to have this as a, as a tool uh, to be used. But I'm afraid uh, because I know uh, around me and uh, also from you that uh, this is not the case in uh, many, many clinics still, that it's not done at all or not done routinely and, uh, and okay. I think... So talking about routine use as opposed yeah. to at all, we do have a lot of people that say, 
I only use this device <laughs> yes. when I think I have a problem. I know, I know. But so what's the, you know, what do we what do we say to somebody like that? Well, I think it's 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 also an, it's it's an approach. I'm not saying it's a good approach, but it's an approach. I mean, if you if everything goes well and they have always done it without uh, and they have a flow meter in their institute for the very difficult cases or the cases done maybe more off pump or with younger people, I think it's a good thing to train them to use it. But you cannot con maybe convince or force an older surgeon who has always done it not to do it. But and it's not uh, just older surgeons. Yeah, they are old, also not younger all surgeons. Sure. Yeah, yeah, that's right. true. That's yeah. true. But I think uh, if you have a big institute, which is a teaching hospital, I think it would be absolutely mandatory, in my view, for the chief to reinforce this uh, practice to do it in all the cases. Mm -hmm. It gives a stability, uh, gives uh, feedback to the younger surgeons also, and gives uh, eventually even a quality assessment for the long term of what has been done. Yes. Um, some surgeons might say, uh, if they're using our device and they come up with a result that's maybe not optimal, right. mean flow is questionable, right. certainly pulsatility index is going to be 7, 8, 10, 11, and they say to us, well, I expected that because I had a uh, compromised outflow bed or I had a bad target. Is this, is this acceptable? Or what do we do with that? Yeah, well, these are the borderline cases, and you will always have borderline cases in your practice. Uh, it's then it's a matter of confidence of the surgeon in uh, the, maybe the possibility that this outflow bed, as you said, or this high PI and high resistance uh, might uh, change over time. And we have published a study in the Journal of Thoracic Cardiovascular Surgery on this, that in fact the EMA or uh, LIMA uh, anastomosis and uh, graft uh, show a lower uh, flow, if you take it overall, has always been lower, uh, despite the fact that the, uh, the region of interest, which is uh, the LAD region, uh, has the um, highest muscle mass. So there is a discrepancy, and this discrepancy is probably inherent to the mammary artery, uh, and which will then, with time, remodel and increase the flow. This has been published, has been studied in about 30 patients, uh, and in a very good journal, mm -hmm. and um, uh, and uh, it's not only us. Other people find also it's strange. So, Why do we have lower flows at the beginning? So, so okay to that, accept that, something marginal. Yes, occasionally. this can then also be part of the decision making for accepting something marginal. Mm -hmm. marginal. Okay, that's uh, yeah. that's good. So our you can provide some comfort in our guidance to say I think so. it's I think okay so. to I think uh, it's things not, change over Everything time. is not black and white Dynamic. in medicine. In medicine, <laughs> it's, it's an not. art. Oh, okay. no, it's an art. <laughs> you know. Okay. Uh, right. Dr. Walpott, where do you see the future of quality control with um, cardiac surgery, particularly cabbage surgery, yeah. going? Well, I think I think the uh, the the flow measurement, the flow measurement should be integrated every, everywhere in every center and in every uh, cabbage surgery done. Now, this is easy to do. There is no excuse not to do it. And uh, I think will be suf sufficient in about probably 95% of the patient. 95% of the patient will do fine with, uh, uh, with these guidelines and with this flow measurement. Now there is this 5% and there is a question, what, what shall we do? Of course, we can use uh, the imaging modality, which will help. Mm -hmm. uh, which will help. I'm speaking now of quality control of cabbage. It uh, the imaging might help in other uh, um, findings or defining epiotic and finding your coronary. This is something else. But I'm speaking now purely in assessing the quality of uh, your anastomosis. And mm -hmm. this, uh, in certain percentage, it might be helpful for the surgeon 
to have the tool immediately in the OR to look at his anastomosis, how it looks like, and to uh, decide on this basis to redo it or not to redo it. So you're saying that the, the technology is good enough, the problem is getting more people to adopt it universally or as a standard? I think the technology is here, but the, especially the flow measurement technology, this is, I think they, this is good enough and it's uh, reliable. Uh, reproducible and there is not a problem. The imaging uh, addition is anyhow more difficult, that is clear, because of the moving target, it's more difficult, but uh, it's also more difficult because people are, have not uh, used it so much, there are no uh, real guidelines yet, and especially you use this um, imaging technology, you use it mostly on the difficult cases, which are anyhow difficult to, to make a decision. Right. Then you have this additional imaging, which probably will help you yeah. to make it, uh, the right decision for right. the patient. Do you have anything you'd like to, to, to any message you'd like oh, to offer? Oh, one, one of the messages, yes. somebody who has been around for uh, yeah, yeah. 30, 40 years in the, in the practice. Yeah, yeah, the message is, the is, is that, of course, I mean, it has been a fantastic uh, 20 years of evolution uh, with uh, your company, uh, with this technology and your company. And uh, basically what is fantastic to see that we have been able with this to uh, improve the quality of the work we, we give and the revascularization uh, procedures uh, we do for our patients. So basically the, the, there is um, a problem, there is some uh, question how to uh, uh, get there, there is some research involved, a lot of research involved, and, and finally there is even uh, a statement that there are guidelines uh, with uh, good evidence, and mm -hmm. this is uh, will serve definitely not only cardiac surgery, but mainly the patient, and that is what we are That's here for. Very good. Thank you for your time, Dr. Okay. Well, I really appreciate it, <laughs> no, as, as always.